If your company owns many vehicles and pieces of equipment and need an efficient maintenance log to track details about each unit, part numbers, and to create service records, then check this out. I will show you how to easily build a vehicle maintenance tracker custom to your specific needs. Welcome to our channel. My name is Zach Stevenson. I'm a business processes and no code consultant. If you need help streamlining or automating any of your business processes, please visit our website below to book a free console. We are going to use two different softwares to create this type of application. So first thing that we'll need to do is create a smart suite account. If you do not have one already, there is a link in the description below to get signed up. The other piece of software is fill out. That is a form builder that we can use to build on top of smart suite and the database to be able to have our users, employees, service managers, whoever is looking after entering this information in data it gives them a very simple form that they can use to submit the information to our database. So as I said, link in the description below for both smart suite and for fill out. If you have an account, go ahead, get logged in and we will start in smart suite. So you can go down to here once you're logged in and add a new solution. And we're going to create from scratch. Once you're in, you can label it, whatever you want. I'm just going to call it vehicle and equipment maintenance. You can pick your icon and colors as well. And there's going to be three different apps that we're going to need with a system like this. It's very customizable. Your company, your organization may operate a little bit differently. You can build out basically whatever you want. I'm going to keep it relatively simple. We're going to have three apps across the top here that all connect. So the first one's going to be vehicles and equipment, where we'll obviously list all our vehicles and equipment. The next one's going to be service log. So each record within the service log will link to a vehicle. And then we're going to have employees so they can select themselves from the list to say who completed that service log and who completed the maintenance on whatever vehicle or truck or a piece of equipment that you're doing the service on. I'll go in here and I'll rename this vehicle and I can actually rename the record as well. There should be a vehicle option and save. And then to get started, if normal things that we would need is something like year, make, model, maybe trim, if you're looking at a specific vehicle, but there could be other things such as we'll want to roll up the total kilometers. That's going to be pulled in from the vehicle log. And there will be a couple other fields as well that we're going to add. So to get started, we can basically delete all of the default fields and because I am going to create two more tables and I'm going to do something similar where I'm just going to delete all the fields to make it simpler for us. I'm just going to go up here and duplicate the app and I'll rename this one service log and I'll duplicate again and I will label this one employees. Now that we have the tables and apps created, we can go ahead and start adding the different fields that we may need. As I mentioned, we we'll want to bring in a number field type for the year and we can turn off the display thousand separator. We'll bring in a text field for the make and again, another text field for the model. And we'll do one more text field for the trim. Another field we may want is a status field. And in smart suite, there is actually a status in multi select and single select of field types. So in this case, I'm actually just going to use single select for my status. And what the status is going to identify is if I still have the vehicle in use or if it's been archived or sold or something along those lines. So we can easily filter and show vehicles that are actually only in use rather than vehicles that we do no longer have or have got rid of. So I'll add that as a status. We will change the vehicle ID and it's going to be auto generated. And all I'm going to do is pull in the year. We can pull in the make, pull in the model. And if your company has multiple of the same type of vehicle, you might want to add some other unique identifier. That's completely up to you, but we can call this a vehicle ID. Something else we may want to add is another single select field type. We'll rename this to type. And this is useful if your organization has things like, you know, vehicles and trucks and so on, but also has equipment like skid steers and loaders 
and other types of vehicles that you want to, and equipment that you want to classify. We'll add type, we'll just put in here vehicle, and I'll also add loader for now. And you can add as many options and choices to this list as you need. But there is a few more fields that I do want to add. A couple of them are going to be related to the service log. So I won't add those until I get the service log built out. But two more options that I do want to enter here is add a files and images. Basically, you could add anything from an owner's manual to your ownerships to maybe insurance information, other types of documentation, really anything that might be related to that vehicle you can add here. And the last thing that I want to do is I want to add a linked record field type. And this linked record is going to link to the service log. And we want to allow it to link to multiple records. So let's click add. And we can see here now that I have a link to service log field. That's basically it for the vehicle app. We can move into the service log now because we've already added a linked field in the vehicles to the service log. If I just go into this fields to display, I can add the link to vehicle field here. And there's a couple of other things we may want, but maybe we want to use a status. Again, this could be a single select, whatever you want. And I'll just keep it really simple for now. Those could be the different statuses that we have. We'd maybe want a due date in case we're looking ahead here and we want to be able to add due dates to specific vehicles. We can add two different text areas. One could be part numbers and another text area could be service notes. So on this specific log, we could add the different part numbers that we come across so that we can easily reference them in the future and then any service notes that you have, whether you did, you know, a brake change, tire change, something along those lines. A couple other fields that we may want is a, I will add a number field here and I'll just call this kilometers slash hours. It's some pieces of equipment tracked by the hour versus the kilometers driven. So you can enter that number there. The last field that I will add is another file and images so that if, you, if there's any pictures or anything that you want to add based on the maintenance that you're performing, then you can upload that very easily as well. And then a couple more edits. So I'll go into the primary key here. I'll just change this to the service ID. It can be auto generated. And I'm just going to add this by due date and maybe the vehicle that we performed the maintenance on. And the last thing is we want to link to an employee record so that this way when the employee is uploading the information via the form they can select their name from the list and then management or whoever is responsible for this type of information can see who performed what tasks on whatever vehicle well now we will move into employees and similar to before i'll click into the fields to display and i'll click the link to service log this one's going to be very simple. We'll just add a full name field type, and then you can add anything else that you want as well. So if you need to add phone number, or email, or something along those lines, you can, but for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to keep it really simple and just add full name and the link to the service log. And I will just change this to employee and I'll auto generate this one as well, based off of the full name. So I'm just going to quickly add a couple sample employees and that way we can start doing some testing to make sure things are working properly before we integrate with fillout. So I'll go back to the vehicle app and there's a couple things that we want to bring in. So I'm just going to right click here. We're going to add a roll up field and I want it to link to the service log and I want it to look at the kilometers and hours. And I want to find the max number there. Basically what I'm doing is all we want to see is the current or the highest number of hours that are on a vehicle or the highest amount of mileage or kilometers that are on a vehicle. If we can rename this, I'll just call it kilometers slash hours or miles if you're in the U S and the last thing that I may want to do is add a lookup to 
the part numbers so that any time in the service log that part numbers have been added, it will show up here as well in line with your vehicle record. But for testing purposes, you'll want to go in and add all of the relevant vehicles to your company. But I have some sample data here that I'm just going to quickly copy and paste. It. Okay, now that I have the data pasted in, one thing that you may want to do is go into the grouping icon here, and we may want to group by type. So then we can easily find our vehicles based on the type of vehicle or piece of equipment. A blank record here. So I'm just going to quickly delete that one. And then we can move on. From here, what you would need to do without a form is go into the service log here. We could select the plus icon here, and then we can select the vehicle. We can select the employee and so on. But if we're using fill out, it makes it a lot easier to enter this type of information. You can navigate to fill out again. If you do not have an account, there's a link in the description below. You can get started for free. Go to fill out. We're going to add a new form. We're going to connect it to another integration here, which is smart suite. I'll just pick whatever theme for the time being, and I will just call it maintenance blog. You'll want to authenticate your account. If you haven't done so already, it is pretty straightforward. Just follow the steps and then we can go to the solution that we want and the app that we want. So we're actually going to be submitting the form and submitting the log into the service log. So we hit continue, we'll create record and I'll click finish setup. I'll go back to edit and you can see here, there's some pre-filled fields for us already as it found the various fields that exist within the service law. So a few things that we may want to add is the vehicle and we want to add the employee, add something like due date. We can add service notes, part numbers, files and images, and the total kilometers that are currently on that vehicle or piece of equipment. Next thing we want to do is add a URL parameter. What that's going to allow us to do is from smart suite within our vehicle application, we'll add a button and then the user can come in here, select that button and it will open up and pre-fill the vehicle that we want to use rather than having to navigate from the list here. We'll go into settings, URL parameters, and we'll add a new parameter and we'll just call this vehicle ID. We'll select add and go back to the edit, select here, click the little plus icon. And then from the URL parameters list, we'll just insert that vehicle ID. And then just a couple more steps with fill out. We'll go into the due date here and we will add today's date. If we go into date utilities and select today, it will automatically default when you open up the form to today that can be changed if you want, but it just removes one more step for us. And then we can go down here. We'll want to insert the status and we're going to add the default value as complete. I can just type in complete right here because I assume if you're submitting this log, you want to show the status as complete. So we'll add that here, go down to logic and we'll hide that. You'll see that it gets grayed out. This actually is not visible on the form. It will just automatically complete this for us upon submission. Now that we have all these fields set up, we have the integration set up. We can go into the last page here and we can just enter vehicle log submitted. You can have this redirect or go to a new form, however you want your process set up. But to keep things simple, I am just going to show the last page as vehicle log submitted when they submit the actual form. We can go up here to publish. Now that the form has been published, we're going to want to copy this link, go back into smart suite, right click and add a button field type, and we'll label it submit log. You can select whatever color you want. And I want to use the URL formula, use the concat function inside brackets. And I want to get rid of the placeholder here so we can get rid of those X's. And then on the other side of the quotation, but within the bracket, we'll add a comma and start typing record ID. 
and I will hit apply. And you can see here now the formula is the URL link. And then we're going to be appending the record ID to the URL. When I click add field, you'll see there's a button here now. And if I click submit log, it's adding that record ID to the URL and assigning it here. And then we can go through, select whoever the employee is making the completion. It's added the due date for us. We can just add whatever number here. If you had files or images to upload, you could, and then you can click submit. Shows that it's been completed. I can navigate back to SmartSuite, scroll across, and we can see that the kilometer has been updated. The lookup for the part numbers has been updated and it has linked to a service log. We click into the service log to view it, or I could go over to the service log app and see that there has been a log added here and I can scroll through and see the part numbers and the service notes and the kilometers and who submitted that service log. That's it for this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. I hope you found this helpful and handy. Please hit that subscribe button so you can get more tutorials in the future. Thanks.